Il y a une note ministérielle qui vient de tomber, je ne sais pas si tu es au courant. Il euh, y a toutes des mesures au niveau sécurité routière qui vont être prises. On va au contraire obliger les gens à savoir utiliser un GSM en conduisant. Dans le périmètre maintenant, on va devoir passer à un TGSM. Tu dois pouvoir envoyer un SMS et éviter un obstacle et passer à côté. Oh putain ah, oui. C'est pas moi qui l'ai inventé, tu peux regarder ici, voilà. Il ouais. y en a beaucoup qui vont se cracher avec oh, ça, je te dis ça. Ben, je veux bien croire, hein. Voilà, ton GSM, je vais chercher des frites. Regarde tout ce qu'on s'en va. Ah oui. Oh là là. Nous rentrerons en retard ce soir. Et attention que je corrige les fautes après. Hein. Regarde comment tu m'écris, Cole. Oh là. Ah oui, c'est impossible. Ah, je suis de retour ce soir. Ah ah oh, oh. oh là, ça... Non, c'est... Ah ouais, là, là, ça te valait, hein. Bon, t'imagines, ça, c'est un enfant. On va, vas-y. 443. Ah Honnêtement, j'ai l'impression d'être un connard qui ouais. sait pas du tout conduire. Voilà, en fait. voilà exactement. J'ai écrit n'importe quoi. Hein. Tu n'auras pas ton permis à cause de ça. À cause de ça Oui. Ben, c'est dangereux ce qu'ils vont faire. Si la loi passe, je roule plus. Non. Tu ah. tournes, oui, mais. Regarde la route. Ah oh. J'arrive pas. Non, mais j'arrive pas. Hein. Il va y avoir des tués. Il va y avoir des tués, hein Il va y avoir des morts sur les routes Je sais pas conduire, attraper mon GSM... Moi, je sais pas faire les deux, quoi ah. C'est trop dangereux You don't want to put people through what I put people through. It's not worth it. I tell my story, and, and one thing that I tell the kids is, you know, I want them to look at me and, and be able to say, I do not want to be him. I don't want to do what he did. I don't want to cause the pain that he's caused. I was 19 years old. Um, I living at home with my parents. On my way to work, I made a choice to text and drive. I go across the center line, and I hit another car. In that car were two men that were, that were also headed to work, and um, they were both killed on impact. I was sentenced to 30 days in jail, so they put me in a cell, gave me a small blue pad, it's about an inch and a half thick, and they threw it on the floor, and, um, and that, was, that was it. You know, I sat in there for these 
two guys that I didn't know, that I didn't have anything in common, in common with. The guy that was waiting to be transported to prison because he had nearly beaten his girlfriend to death. Growing up, up to that point, I, I was invincible. Nothing bad was gonna happen to me. Um, and yeah, texting while driving, I did probably 90% of the time when I drove. It was, that was driving to me. Just driving, being on your phone, it, it wasn't driving and texting, it was just driving. I, I think back now and uh, I mean, what, what was I thinking? It is clearly dangerous, clearly obvious, and, and it makes no sense to me that I could think like that. And, you know, now I have to live every day in, in regret um, because I thought I could do it. Um, and I, I hate myself every day for it. I don't remember if I was sending or reading. That's also part of my message, is that message was so unimportant to me in my life. I was less than five minutes away from work. Could whatever I was texting waited five minutes? Yeah, absolutely. There's not a day that goes by that I don't regret what I did. Um, you know, I always tell kids, as difficult and as hard as my time was in jail, um, I would go back, I would spend the rest of my life in that 23-hour lockdown cell on the floor if I could bring back those two men's lives. My name is Matt Richtel and my book is A Deadly Wandering. This is a true story of a deadly, mysterious car crash and what was happening inside the brain of the person who was driving. Reggie Shaw is the main character of this book and he is an all-American kid. Reggie was driving to work in his truck. Coming the other direction were two men in a Saturn and Reggie crossed the yellow divider and tragically, it was a terrible wreck, and two fine men had died. One of the officers on the scene suspected Reggie was texting. Reggie said he didn't know what happened. He couldn't remember. Here's what the investigators discovered. Reggie was texting 11 times in the minutes and seconds around the crash, maybe exactly at the crash time. As the evidence mounted, Reggie came clean. He understood the science. He understood that he'd become distracted. He became maybe, arguably, the single most important voice opposing texting and driving in this country. There is something about a story, an irresistible narrative, that we can't take our eyes off of that becomes more powerful than any kind of lecture. And that's what I want for this book. I want young people to pick it up. I want parents to pick it up. I want teachers to pick it up. And I want them to become swept up in Reggie's story. You can be attentive behind the wheel and in your lives. I want this book to be part of that conversation, to stimulate that conversation, spark it, put gasoline on that conversation so that it becomes a wildfire.